Dobar dan. Hello. Welcome back to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Caitlin. Now, did you know that if you start learning a language as a kid, you're probably going to end up a lot more successful than if you start learning as an adult? Of course you did. You don't need me to tell you that. All right, end of episode. See you next time on the science behind language learning. Okay, okay, there's a lot more to this story. On the surface, the relationship between age and language learning may seem obvious, but I think it's safe to say that there are more questions than answers. Today, I'll walk you through what we know about how age affects language learning and why it's complicated. We'll even talk about one of the most hotly contested topics in SLA, the critical period hypothesis. All right, so you don't need your PhD in linguistics to know that people who learn second languages as children usually end up sounding like native speakers, but people who learn second languages as adults usually, well, don't. At the very least, most adult learners find that foreign accents are pretty hard to shake and some grammar errors can be really persistent. The effects of age start to emerge pretty early in the language learning process, even for first language learning. Babies are born able to distinguish speech sounds in any language, but by about 10 months old, they can only distinguish sounds that exist in the languages that they've been exposed to. But what would happen if they weren't exposed to any languages? Is there a point at which it's just too late to learn a language? Enter the critical period hypothesis. A critical period is a period in development during which a skill or ability is most easily acquired given adequate exposure. Once the critical period is over, it's impossible to develop that ability either at all or at least to its full potential. There are known critical periods for things like vision and hearing. Fortunately, it's very rare for children to go without early exposure to language, so this isn't the easiest thing to study. But there have sadly been a handful of known cases of isolated children, and actually many deaf children of hearing adults don't get exposure to sign language in their early years. So the experiences and language abilities of these children have led researchers to propose that there is a critical period for first language learning. So the experiences and language abilities of these children have led researchers to propose that there is a critical period for first language learning. Children with no exposure to language before around puberty may not ever be able to fully acquire their first language. And even those exposed as young as two to four years old may not achieve native-like proficiency. Now, are second languages subject to this same critical period? It could be that simply having experience learning a first language tunes your language learning muscles, so to speak, so that they're still usable for language learning later in life. The critical period hypothesis says that age is strictly tied to ultimate attainment, which is the end point of learning. It's essentially the highest proficiency that an individual can reach in a language. And if you don't start learning a language by a certain age, your ultimate attainment will never match that of a native speaker. The critical period hypothesis says that age is strictly tied to ultimate attainment, which is the end point of learning. It's essentially the highest proficiency that an individual can reach in a language. And if you don't start learning a language by a certain age, your ultimate attainment will never match that of a native speaker. The proposed cutoff for a second language critical period is usually around puberty, but some estimates are as low as age seven or even younger, especially for pronunciation. Now, if you're watching this video and you miss the boat on learning a language in childhood, that might sound pretty bleak. But opponents of the critical period hypothesis point to examples of individuals who started learning their second languages later in life as adults and are indistinguishable from native speakers. Now, while these learners are no doubt exceptions, their mere existence can disprove the critical period hypothesis. But in return, critical period supporters claim that more sensitive language tests would reveal that such speakers aren't really native-like after all. But there's a fundamental problem with this line of evidence. It's common to see monolingual native speakers used as a benchmark for evaluating gifted late L2 learners in critical period studies. But gifted L2 learners aren't monolingual. Bilingual native speakers perform differently from monolinguals on many tests of language, so it seems misguided to expect late bilinguals to act like monolinguals at all. 
Bilingual native speakers perform differently from monolinguals on many tests of language performance. So it seems misguided to expect late bilinguals to act just like monolinguals. Two things that critical period supporters and opponents can agree on are one, that ultimate attainment for early learners is likely to be higher than for late learners. And two, that native like or not, some late learners do achieve very high proficiency. But there are still so many open questions. First, how exactly do language learning outcomes relate to age? This question is intricately tied to the critical period hypothesis. One option is there is no critical period per se, but learning outcomes decline steadily and continuously as age of acquisition or AOA increases. We don't know how steep this decline is, but basically the younger you are, the higher your ultimate attainment. Maybe after a certain age, ultimate attainment is low on average, but it no longer declines with age. A 16-year-old, 30-year-old, and 70-year-old are all on equal footing. If a critical period does exist, it most likely looks something like this. Ultimate attainment remains uniformly high for AOAs during childhood, and then abruptly starts decreasing after a certain age with, again, age effects perhaps leveling out after a certain age. But when is this cutoff? Puberty? Early adulthood? Early childhood? Are there different cutoffs for different aspects of language? Grammar tends to be harder to master than vocabulary, and phonology, that part of language responsible for your accent, seems to be especially difficult to learn, even for the youngest learners. The second big open question is why do young learners tend to have better language outcomes? One very plausible explanation for age effects is biology. Hormones that affect learning and memory change around puberty, which is a commonly cited critical period cutoff. Children's brains also work differently from those of adults. They have more neural plasticity, which is a fancy way of saying that it's easier for their brain cells to make new connections. Some evidence even suggests that these brain-based differences might account for a critical period for learning grammar, but not vocabulary. Though even adult learners have been shown to process grammar like native speakers. Another possibility is that children are just better learners. But actually when directly compared, adults and older children learn languages faster than young children. Children do eventually edge out adults, but only after up to five years of learning in immersion settings. In formal classroom settings, the adult advantage actually persists for much longer. It could be the circumstances in which children learn languages. In an earlier video, we break down some key factors that make L1 learning so much more widely successful than L2 learning. Most of them are actually related to age and are relevant here. So go check that out when you have a chance. Children usually have an urgent need to learn languages, especially if they're living in a country where that language is spoken. Fitting in on the playground and understanding what's going on at school are pretty big motivators. Kids also tend to get more rich, varied, and ample exposure than adults do. Some studies have found that language learning abilities hold pretty steady even into the late teens, suggesting that societal factors related to school and not having the pressures of, well, adulting might actually contribute to age effects. And it might simply be that kids whose first languages are less developed experience less interference when learning second languages. Or maybe there's some other explanation. There's a lot of conflicting evidence about the relationship between age and language learning. The truth is it's extremely difficult to study because there are so many key interrelated variables like age of acquisition, years of exposure, and age of testing. People who start learning as kids have more time to master the language. We can try to control for exposure. Say we only look at people who've been learning for 30 years, which should be sufficient for reaching ultimate attainment. Well, the ones who started learning in early childhood will be in their 30s, but after 30 years, the late learners will be older adults. So now we're testing people at different ages and their performance on language tests may be influenced by things other than language ability, like general cognitive abilities that change with age or familiarity with the testing environment. In order to disentangle variables like age of acquisition, years of exposure, and age at testing, 
not to mention other factors that affect language learning and are also related to age, like motivation, learning context, learning strategies, aptitude, and more, we need to look at tons of learners. Recent estimates based on statistical models suggest that tens of thousands of learners would be needed to understand these effects, which isn't exactly your typical linguistics research sample. Well, I hope you now see that this seemingly simple relationship between age and language learning is in fact, not so simple. And honestly, we've only scratched the surface. Check out the references we've linked for you in the description to read more about the fascinating nuances of this topic. To recap, number one, if there's one thing everyone can agree on, it's that children have an advantage over adults when it comes to language learning success. Number two, but this advantage doesn't necessarily translate into the younger, the better. It's possible that there is a continuous relationship between age and ultimate attainment, which would mean that starting at age three is better than five, which is better than seven and so on. But if there is a critical period, anyone who starts learning before that critical period ends can achieve native-like proficiency. Number three, where do age effects in second language learning come from? Biological changes in hormones and neuroplasticity, superior learning ability, higher motivation, richer learning environments, and less interference from the first language may all contribute in some way. And finally, it's extremely difficult to make conclusions about the relationship between age and language learning because relevant variables like age of acquisition, years of exposure, and age at testing are so highly interrelated. And don't forget, it's time to acknowledge that monolingual native speakers might not be the most accurate benchmark for evaluating critical period effects. And newer methods using big data and statistical modeling might be the key to disentangling some of these issues. And if you're a late second language learner, don't lose heart. It might require a little bit more effort, but you can still make great strides in your language learning journey. If you like this video and you wanna stay tuned for more videos about the science behind language learning, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if there's a topic that you wanna learn more about, tell us about it in the comments. Be sure to check out the description for this video for some free materials on age effects and the critical period, including an interactive quiz to test your knowledge on the topic. Thanks for watching. Dovijenya, hati hati. Hi there, me again. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to get your free goodies, which you can access through the link right here on the screen. In our next video, we're gonna be talking about what it means to be fluent in a second language. If you wanna be the first to know when that video comes out, then ring that notification bell. In the meantime, you can catch up on our existing videos right here. We'll see you next time on the science behind language learning. Bye.